In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about using snap motion to create caps from your clips that you can then import into Photoshop to make your GIFs. Snap motion is a Mac program. I don't believe it's available for any other operating system, although I could be wrong. It is available at the App, App Store. Um, I believe it is under $15, I think. When I bought it a few years ago, it was 12. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but it's it's fairly inexpensive. And well, considering that I have made thousands and thousands of caps in the couple of years I've been using it, I definitely got my money's worth. So this is your opening screen. It has two modes, um, what I call photo mode and then batch mode. So what you want to do is click on show batch mode this is your little your workspace. Um, as it says, you can drag and drop your files or you can click the plus sign. Um, and if you click the plus sign, you just get the standard menu. So this is the clip I'm going to be working with. So I just say open. So if you select the movie, now you get this menu. One of the things that I particularly like about this program is that um, I find it it's just very clear you have all the information right here and in particular it tells you how many frames per second you're working with which is of course important because you need to know how many frames you want to extract so if you you know a 24 per second source frame source is going to be very different from a 60 frame per second source i didn't explain this well originally when you have a 24 frame per second source, that means that there will be 24 image files extracted from one second of video if you select the option to extract all of the frames. When you have 60 frames per second source, that means 60 files extracted from one second of video. That's a considerable difference and that's going to affect your choice of how many frames you want to extract per second. In making GIFs, I found that I get the best results if I export every second frame in 24 frame per second sources and every fifth frame in 60 frame per second sources. That is kind of the best compromise between having smooth natural looking motion and not having too many files or too many images in your GIF. This is obviously your timeline. It, def it defaults to being in the center, I'm not sure why, but this is your um, beginning and end caps, um, whatever you call them. So if you, so for, say for example, I wanted to move the beginning from here. Um, if you click on either the left or right buttons, it, it will take your cursor to that spot. Um, this is the play button, clearly. Then you have over here transformation options. Um, I've never used them, but they are available. I, I don't actually know what these do, but you could experiment if you wanted to. You can use sound um, or you can have the sound on. I, I never do that, I, I don't find it helpful. Um, this allows you to watch, to play back at a slower speed or a faster speed if, again, for some reason that would be helpful to you. And these arrows take you back or forward one frame at a time. So this is where you specify all your parameters for what you want the program to do. You have four options for mode. Um, I almost always use every X frames, so every however many frames. For um, 24 frame per second sources, um, I use the value 2. So if I type that in and then press tab, down here, you can tell it tells me that I have 25 generated frames, so I will have 25 images if I um, if I process this now. But I just realized that I moved <laughs> the end caps, and the, so I actually want the whole thing. So I'm going to just tab through that again. Ah, there we go, 34. That sounds better. Okay, I always include the start and the end frame, just because. Usually when I'm doing this, I have already trimmed my clip to exactly where I want it to be. So I, I don't have to worry about extraneous material. 
a max size. This confused me at first because I didn't know what it meant. It took me a while to realize what it does. This refers to the width of the image. So this source image is 1920 pixels wide. Um, if, if, I, if I leave it at the default of 4000, obviously it's going to produce caps 1920 pixels wide. But if, for example, you said, I know I want this GIF to be 540 pixels wide, so, and I don't want to have to do the extra step of resizing it in Photoshop, what you can do here is you can change this number to 540 pixels wide, and then the program, as it takes the caps from the, from the frames that you've selected, it will resize the image, so you will end up with 34 um, image files that are each 540 pixels wide and a proportional width, I think it, um, height, a proportional height, sorry. But um, as you have probably figured out by that, I don't actually like to, do, to use that simply because sometimes I change my mind. And also because if I want to go back and say reuse the files, like if I, um, sometimes as you probably know if you follow my Longmire GIFs, um, sometimes I will GIF a scene um, in with small GIFs and then I might go back and do large versions of some of the Vic, the Vic shots because, because I love her so. <laughs> um, and sometimes I just make graphics or um, icons so for, the, for those situations, I, I want the original image size. So I prefer to have larger files with bigger images at, that I can then um, make smaller later if I want to. Your format, you have four options. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't remember what the default is, but I prefer PNGs. I, I just, I like that image format the best. For override, your options are replaced existing files or use alternative name. That's probably fairly self-explanatory. Um, as for errors, I don't think I've ever had an error in this program. You can actually get it to generate a log file, but I kept just having files that said no errors every time I ran um, one of these and it was annoying and I just deleted them constantly. So I switched to no error handling. Down here, you can add a headline or a credit. Uh, I believe that that's essentially like watermarking your images. You can do that if you want. Um, I, I would think it would be a lot easier to do it in Photoshop myself if I was going to do something like that, but your choice. And then down here is just your destination for where you actually want the image files to go. You can either select it from here by choosing, by clicking on choose, and then you select your destination. The alternative is that if you click this button, which is like the enter, go, do the thing button, it will, and there's nothing in, in that um, box, it will just prompt you say where you want to save this. So I'm going to save this here, which is the source of the, the, um, the clip file, and I just click choose destination. It tells me that the task has been added, and this is what happens when it's working. Now it's done! Hooray! So I go back to Finder, and here we are. Here are all my clips. So this is every second frame from that two second clip for a total of 34. So the one other thing I will talk about is your syntax for naming your images. So if you go to snap motion and then preferences, there aren't very many, in uh, go to the batch tab, so number of concurrent snaps is just how many frames it's going to extract at the same time. Um, that has an impact on your RAM usage and also obviously impacts how long it takes. Um, then you can select to have no alerts, whatever. This is the part that I found extremely confusing, the output name format. So this is how I have it set up, the movie name, which is the title of your original clip file then a hyphen, then the time in seconds. What that means is um, if my 
if this was a longer clip, for example, say it was a 22 second clip, and I wanted to cap from second 14 to second 22, the first number in my file name would be 14. That tells me what actual second in the clip I'm looking at. The frame index is the running number of the images that are extracted. So if my first image or my first frame was extracted at 14 seconds, the frame index would be one. It depends on how many total frames you are extracting as to how many zeros will be before that one. If you are extracting between one and 99 frames, then you will have zero one. If you're extracting 100 to 999 frames, you will have zero zero one. So in that example, your number, the file, the numbers in your file would be either 1401 or 14001. I've never extracted more than a thousand frames, so I don't know, but I'm, I I'm, can only assume that there would be another zero in there. Um, the other thing I should mention about using the time seconds parameter is that it it's only ever in seconds. So if you go past one minute, it is going to translate that into seconds. So obviously, you know, 60 seconds is a full minute, 61 seconds, etc., etc. I hope that makes sense. Um, it makes sense to me in my head when I look at it. So that's how I have it set up. But you have all of these other options um, and you can construct a file name that's going to work for you. So then, so just to look at this here. So Here's your running number. So if you if you just ignore the very first number, this is the running number of the clips. Um, and here, this number is, so this was zero, so between zero to one second, we got seven frames. Um, in the first sec, the first second, we got frames eight to 18, um, second two, so on, so on. And then there were three frames in from second, two to three. You might have to experiment a little bit with your file name just so that you can to find out what's what works best for you. You can import multiple files so if you wanted to work with four clips and you can then uh, I'll just let me just add another one in while I'm here to show you. Uh, here we go this one so if I do that and then the little plus sign comes up and there we go. So now if you highlight this one, you can see this one is four seconds, also 24 frames per second, which leads me to 51 generated frames if I were to process that one now. Uh, and you can delete files if you are working with multiple files and you, you have to scroll down and you want to get rid of some of the ones that you've done. You just make sure you select it and then press the minus button and they go away. So that's snap motion. Uh, that's all I can think of to explain. If anything is unclear or if I've omitted something that you wanted to know about, please let me know. Otherwise, um, thanks for watching and listening. And um, next up, we'll be importing into Photoshop.